Assalamu alaikum professor Ibrar Hussain here from Pakistan today i'm going to show you the surgical management of congenital ptosis with positive jaw winking this 12 years old boy presented with drooping of the right upper lid since birth on examination there was about 3 mm right upper lid ptosis with normal bell's phenomena and normal extraocular motility A peculiar feature of this ptosis was that there was winking of right upper lid while chewing here you can see the swinking it is called marcus gun jaw winking phenomena the surgical management of such type of ptosis not only needs correction of the ptosis but also elimination of the jaw winking surgery starts from crease incision then we cut the orbicularis oculi muscle which exposes the underlying orbital septum this whitish structure is orbital septum next we cut the orbital septum and expose the levator aponeurosis then the levator aponeurosis is cut horizontally above and parallel to its insertion and the underlying muller muscle remains intact a strip of levator aponeurosis is removed this will eliminate the pull of levator muscle on upper lid which in turn reduce the wink of the upper lid which is due to co contraction of the levator muscle with jaw movement Then the Fox Pentagon sling procedure is used to elevate the lid. For this purpose, three stab incisions are given above the eyebrow. The medial incision is located just above the eyebrow at the level of medial canthus, the lateral one at the level of lateral canthus, and the middle one on the forehead, one centimeter above and midway between the previous two incisions. I use 2O proline as sling material. The needle of 2O proline is first passed from the central forehead incision and pulled out from the medial brow incision. Then the needle is passed under the skin from medial brow incision to come out through the crease incision at the level of junction of medial one third and lateral two third of the lid. then the needle is passed through the partial thickness of tarsal plate at its middle one third about 2 mm below its superior border lid is inverted to ensure that needle has not passed through the full thickness of the tarsal plate then the needle is passed upward under the skin through the crease incision at the level of junction of lateral one third and medial two third of the lid length and needle is pulled out through the lateral brow incision finally the needle is passed from the lateral brow incision under the skin to middle forehead incision and proline pulled out then i fix the proline further to the tarsal plate with 360 vicryl sutures this reduces the cheese wiring effect of 20 proline through the tarsal plate This is followed by closing the crease incision by using 60 vicryl continuous suturing. Finally, the two ends of the proline sutures in the forehead incision are pulled out to attain the required height of the upper lid and tied together. I tie this multiple times to attain a thick knot to make it resistant to slip down under the skin.
the knot is buried deep in the forehead incision. and suture is applied to eliminate the chance of knot exposure. This is first post-op day picture of the patient. There is some under correction but as this is first post-op day and there is lid edema. Final lid height is attained in next few days. This procedure is effective for ptosis but addresses the jaw inking partially. The reason is that some of the pull force of the levator muscle is transferred to the tarsal plate via muller muscle which remains intact in this procedure. But cosmetically this wink is almost eliminated in vertical movement of the jaw that is during chewing. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe the channel.